It's time for the Racer Report with head coach Chris Hatcher. And over the weekend, it was the Halloween show for the Murray State Racer Band. Wow, I always look forward to this. We had Fred Flintstone, we had Smurfs. We even had the Murray State drum line dressed up like the Blue Men. Fantastic day for the Racer Band. And it was a big day too for the Racers in a tough defeat to Eastern Kentucky. We've got all the high highlights and post-game reaction coming up next on the Racer Report that starts right now. Hi folks and welcome to the Racer Report with head coach Chris Hatcher, Dave Winder here as we have to talk this week about a tough one point defeat to Eastern Kentucky. But I tell you what, Quay Huzzy from Murray State played some great football. He is the co-defensive player of the week in the Ohio Valley Conference and the newcomer of the week. The uh, junior had uh, 15 tackles, four for a loss. He caused a fumble on that first uh, Murray State touchdown. It was a tough day though, but great game for Quay Huzzy of the Murray State Racers. The offense we have, uh, they can put up points at any time. You know, we just got to uh, continue to play hard on defense and uh, play it like it's a game. Play it like our last night. And that will take us into this week's game in Cookville, Tennessee. The Racers taking on Tennessee Tech. 1.30 kick down at Cookville, and the game will be on the Racer Television Network. Hope that you'll uh, join us for the broadcast or make a trip down to Cookville and root on the Racers. We're here in the Racer locker room at Stewart Stadium with head coach Chris Hatcher. Man, it was a tough loss Saturday, 34-33. The Racers had a chance to win that game on Saturday. Tough defeat, coach, and it was just a couple of plays here and there that cost you. It, it really was. It, it's, it's always difficult to, to get beat, but it's, it hurts even more when you feel like you have the game in hand. You make a play here or there. Um, you call a better call um, that you can, you can overcome the deficit. Get the monkey off your back that Eastern Kentucky has, has, has been to us for quite some time. And, and we come up with a one-point defeat. We're you know, a little bit behind. Our, our team was very disappointed as well as our coaches. It would be better described as a bitter defeat. Bitter, yes, and right. um, and I, I, was, I was mad all the way up until it was time to go to practice Sunday night. And I'm still a little bit mad about it. But <laughs> we, we had way too many opportunities on the field that we left behind um, that, that you can't leave out there if you're going to beat a, a good team. You know, Eastern Kentucky's in the upper echelon of the conference, and for us to be able to get to that point, we got to start making those plays. Well, I tell you what, we're going to roll the highlights here and, and take a look at it. And uh, uh, sometimes, Coach, uh, you know, they say the, when you play golf, the golf guys just aren't going to let that happen. Uh, and this time, the, the football guys, when you get it inside the 10 yard line three times in the first half, you got to do something with it. You do, and you know, it was, we came out, and, and boy, they put it to us right off the get go. We missed two tackles um, on the down there at the pin them inside the 30. They get a big return, even though Caldwell, number 14, he's their All American returner. And then on the first play from scrimmage, you had um, yeah, we just um, we didn't tackle them, and the speed of the game is hard to simulate in practice. So they come out, they go up 7-0 on us. Our first play from scrimmage, we, we bounce the screen. Here's Hannibal Buford, who's played outstanding all season long. And we fumble um, on our first offensive play after a big play. That's yeah, a 30-yard game. Yeah, it was a big play, and you guys were, would have been inside the 30. But then your, your defense, after that first, of course, the, the special teams gave them a short field there. But from that point on, so guys like Quay Huzzy, who's the co-defensive player of the week, newcomer of the week in the OVC, Sam Small, you had some good guys uh, playing on defense. Well, we got a big stop there by our defense, and you're exactly right. That linebacking core is playing really good. And then, you know, old Mike Harris comes out. and um, Feel he, bad for the guy that got nailed Well, that, that happens to be Father Jason, my <laughs> priest. I'm about to coach him up a little better than that. And um, we get it all the way down to the two-yard line. And unfortunately... Um, you know, here Casey checks a fade, got a wide open guy in the end zone. We overthrow him. So we have to settle for a Keenan Cullen field goal. And at this point it's 7-3, but man, it sure could have been a lot worse. I was proud of our guys for settling down and getting back in the ball game. That was with 9.08 to go in the uh, first quarter. Here we go again, more racer defense. Uh, fumble forced by Huzzy. 
And uh, I'm not sure who it was. That's Julian, Julian Whitehead. Julian yep. Whitehead recovered. Just a great defensive player. Well, and, and we get we get great field position um, here, and, and it's it was a really good play for our guys um, to to make it that particular time of the of the game day um, because things really just wasn't going our way. And again, we just we put it on Mike Harris. Um, Eastern Kentucky had the number one rush defense in the conference coming into the ball game, and Mike played outstanding. But again, missed opportunities. Um, Walter Powell beats him on the hitch and go, and and um, we just overthrow him, and we have to rely on another Keenan Cullen field goal. That made it seven to six with 153 to go in the first quarter. Now you were playing downwind in that first quarter. We're into the second quarter here. It was very windy. You think those balls just kind of floated on Casey a little bit? No, we practice into the yeah. wind all the time. I mean, or against the wind. I mean, we practice. With the wind. Yeah, yeah, we practice that away. And um, so he just, we just got to make those throws. And but boy, Darius Buck, um, the junior college transfer from Mississippi, comes up with a big interception. Um, so things are going good, boy. All of a sudden, we've settled down in our groove and. Look at old Mike Harris. Um, you know, oh, here's look, a look guy. Look at Brockman out blocking for him. Um, we got guys playing really hard, and we get it inside the ten again. And um, as you'll see, we 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 kind of falter a little bit. And here's a fourth down play. We I choose to fake the field goal. We don't get it, but Quay Huzzy comes in there, fills the gap, and he completely blew that play up. Yep, and Jeremy um, <laughs> Brackett falls right. on it for the touchdown. Um, which made it um, look like a good call. You know, I was going to keep that <laughs> ball pinned down there. We were going to score a touchdown somehow, some way. Here you can see it again. It's and a tremendous front surge there. Yeah, you know, at first we're all yelling safety, and then after that we're going, oh, it's a touchdown. It's a touchdown, so, yeah. Um, what, a great, what a great deal there for, for Brackett. Any time a defensive player scores, it's, it's awfully nice. Well, that made it 13-7 uh, to 7 there uh, as the, the racers took their first lead, and then – you know, that pass there probably could have been knocked down. Yeah, well, you, you look at, you talk about missed opportunities. You know, you look at, we overthrow one, and then they go down there and they complete one. And then what's not on the highlights is we actually take the ball with a few minutes left in the half, Dave, and we run it down there and we, um, we botch a field goal attempt, get a, a, a high snap and don't hold it, don't get it down. Um, so we missed three points there. Um, What's the other three trips? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, again, you talk about opportunities. Wow. We talk about it all the time. Mm -hmm. um, a play in the first quarter is just as important as a play in the fourth quarter. The, the difference is that play in the fourth quarter is more magnified because you, you don't have much time to overcome any mistakes. And if we just make the routine plays that we're capable of making throughout the course of the game, um, shoot, that could have been a, a blowout oh, win for could, us. Could, but could unfortunately, have. you got to take that off to Eastern Kentucky. As we'll see in the second half, they make more plays than we do. All right, we're here with head coach Chris Hatcher on the Racer Report. Second half coming up here in a moment on the Racer Report. New Wave Advantage number 17, the area's fastest internet. This is Nicole. She wants to watch her favorite YouTube video. Not so fast, Nicole. Her slow DSL connection means downloading takes forever. Nicole's tired of waiting, so she's switching to New Wave. New Wave has the area's fastest internet, up to 10 times faster than DSL. Now Nicole can surf, download photos, and stream videos faster than ever before, without the wait. Thanks to New Wave. Blazing fast internet. Another New Wave Advantage. Call today. Roof Brothers, a Paducah tradition for 100 years. Roof Brothers, locally owned, family run. Roof Brothers, the best selection of beer, wine, and spirits found anywhere. Roof Brothers, service from selecting that special beverage for that special occasion to a keg party at the lake. Roof Brothers, two locations to serve you. Roof Brothers, proud supporters of Murray State Athletics. For more than 30 years, the NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision has helped athletes achieve their dreams. The dream of playing football and hearing the home crowd cheer time after time. The dream of competing for a national championship 
The dream of an excellent education. The dream of becoming a leader. And the dream of playing the right way with sportsmanship. NCAA Division I football. It's not a dream. Come see for yourself. Hi, folks. Welcome back to the Racer Locker Room here at Stewart Stadium for the Racer Report with head coach Chris Hatcher. We're going to roll the second half highlights. It's a beautiful day for football at Stewart Stadium. Great ball game. We're at halftime coming out in the second half. And, Coach, we were in for a wild one here. Uh, I knew it was going to be a wild second half. You know, I wish we had a started better in the third quarter. That's a that's an area that – It's been a bugaboo. It that. has this season. It's just every team's different. And, you know, we get the opening kickoff. We're down one point. We come out and, and, and make a really – bad decision with the football and we should have checked it down to Mike Harris there but you know our defense they come out and um, the and that's Kevin Robinson and Jamal Crook with a big hit we don't get the turnover um, the play before that we almost intercept the ball and then here they go they they crease us with one we missed two tackles on a second and long play and they go up um, with a, with another touchdown. It's very close for us having the ball as opposed to them right. getting a touchdown. Yeah, it was 21-13, 11-49 to go in the third. Then the racers uh, back to work. Uh, Casey Brockman was 31 out of 44 in the game for uh, 336. That's a beautiful catch here. Uh, yep. Well, that actually should, that should have been a beautiful catch. Yeah, <laughs> the one before that was Walter Powell made a big catch. They actually right. called yeah. us for offensive pass interference there, and. Um, so we, we get backed into a third and long, end up having to punt, and here they run a little pick route, um, and we don't switch it off. That's the reason the guy was so open, and they hit us on the bootleg coming across a play we practice all the time. We actually covered a, really well late in the game. So they go up 15 on us. Things aren't looking good, but to our guys' credit, we come back and fight. Javante Trotter had been injured early in the game. Thought he did a great job of fighting through. Um, here's Dexter Durrani. He took a big hit uh, Yeah, junior out of Fort Campbell, who's really been playing very well, Dave. I've been really proud of him. And then Mike gets to running the ball good. And finally, um, we get down here. Um, we hit the freshman, Navar Griffin, out of St. Louis, Missouri, um, for a touchdown. We go for one. Um, we end up kicking it through. So now we're only down eight days. 28-20. This was a 2.44 to go in the third. And then uh, th this was a call that went against us. I, I thought the ball was uncatchable. Well, it was, and all they, their guy ran over us, but um, it is what it is. We had good coverage, and, and there's Jarius Williams, uh, the, 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 the sophomore out of um, down in Alabama. He comes out of there and, and makes a big safety blitz. Great hit on the QB. Boy, our defense, other than a few plays, has played very well. Yeah, and the, the, the spirit on the sidelines was just outstanding, too. There wasn't a guy on the team didn't think they could win the game. I thought maybe uh, Buford was down here, but, you know, looking at it there, I, I don't think his knee was down. Yeah, we turn it over there. We, we've, it's a good play. We've been running for a while. We, we missed the block out wide. and, and they, So they go down, and I think they extend the lead. Um, I, I yeah, it was 34-20 at this yep, point. Yep, and we right? end up blocking the extra point, which right. is was a big play. And um, But we come right back. We end up getting some help on the kickoff there. They got a personal foul, so we get good field position. And um, I believe right here, this was um, – That was a tr to Trotter. What, what a great improvisation by receiver and quarterback. Yeah, that was a fourth down play. Yeah. And it was – so that was a big play for us to cut the lead down to seven. And then you hold them, you get the ball back. Yep, defense played very well there down the stretch. And um, here we get a big run, end up getting a personal foul called on us. Um, it, we hit the sucker. Again, these are some plays, you know, we throw it behind him a little bit. Well, we, Casey's got to lead him if he does. That may be a touchdown, but he's he can do things like this. What a great job wow. of scrambling. Unbelievable throw and catch to Devontae Trotter. The pull us within one. This is with uh, 6.20 to go, still a lot of time left. And then the, the, the missed extra point here, uh, unfortunate, because it would have tied the ball game up. Yeah, um, we just pushed it to the right or to the left. And, um, and he didn't miss it by much. I mean, it was just a, maybe six inches outside the, the upright. Yeah, and, and, and Dave, that, those things, um, boy, it sure would have been nice to be tied at this point. So they end up going forward on fourth down deep in their territory and get it. But our defense bows their neck. We force them to punt back, and here we go. Um, we miss a miss a play there. Mm -hmm. um, you know that puts down in third down here. 
Uh, boy, we wish we had a stayed play side. We had old Mike Harris there. And then, then here's the fourth down play. Yeah, we just underthrow it a little bit on fourth down, and that was all she wrote. And it was a, um, a very sick feeling on the sideline. Mm -hmm. um, we had, had so much energy. Um, I know that you know we didn't have a, a, a super big crowd at the ball game, um, which was a little disappointing. But mm -hmm. the ones that were there, boy, really got into the game, and we appreciate them and, and their support because they were – they were loud. Our team fed off of right. it. And, boy, when we didn't make the fourth down throw and catch there, which would have, would have been a tough play, yeah. um, um, boy, you just – it all the energy was zapped out yeah. of our team. And it, it just – it's not a feeling that we want to feel any other point of the season. Yeah, I don't want that anymore. Uh, it's, it's tough. Tough defeat for the Racers, 34-33 to Eastern Kentucky. We're going to take another break here with head coach Chris Hatcher. When we come back, we're going to visit with – one of the stars of the game for the racers, Quay Hudson. There's a new, unstoppable force in the universe of internet speed. Introducing Warp Wave, the next generation of high-speed internet. Brought to you by the masters of internet service. New wave communications with speeds up to 50 megs. Warp Wave takes you faster than you've ever thought possible. Be the most feared online gamer in the galaxy. Stream video with no deep space delay. Download at speeds light years ahead of the competition. Call today and surf at warp speed with the fastest internet, period. It's the in-your-face defense. Oh, no, it's a high-powered offense. It's the defense, Dad. It's the offense, Mel. And I thought it was the tailgating. Whatever your reason for coming to Stewart Stadium this fall, the defense, <laughs> the offense, or the tailgating, be certain to join the racers for their next home game. I'm Chris Hatcher, and I want to see you here at Stewart Stadium this Saturday when we host Austin P. Hey, Racer fans, don't forget to make GoRacers.com your homepage on the Internet as the Racers uh, are getting going, getting ready for Tennessee Tech. We'll get you ready for that game uh, this Saturday. And also, you can read about the Murray State soccer team as they go into the OVC tournament Thursday night at SEMO against Moorhead State. You can check it all out at GoRacers.com. Back here on the Racer Report with head coach Chris Hatcher, we had a chance to uh, catch up with the co-OVC Defensive Player of the Week, Quay Huzzy, uh, linebacker for the Racers, had 13 tackles. A four for a loss. He caused a fumble, had a couple of sacks. He was all over the place Saturday. Here's that interview with number 15. And we're here after the Murray State 34-33 defeat uh, with Quay Huzzy. Uh, had a great game for Murray State at linebacker. And uh, uh, Quay, uh, maybe tell our, our, our viewers, you know, what it's like. Everybody's pulling in the same direction. And then at the end of the day, the only thing that really matters is what's on the scoreboard, and, and it's tough when you come out on the short end like you did today. Uh, it's amazing how our, our defense can come in together all on one page and uh, want the same thing out of, out of a game. You know, defense played good. It was all on one, one, one page, and uh, that's, how we, that's how we started off in practice. You know, um, Coach Anders, Coach Parker, uh, we play like we practice like it's a game, and uh, I think everybody took that in, and once everybody was on the same page, it's amazing what the defense can do to our offense just to get them out of the bubble. And the offense we have, uh, they can put up points at any time. You know, we just got to uh, continue to play hard on defense and uh, play like it's a game, play it like our last snap. Well, that's what it comes down to now. Uh, you know, with with the way uh, it is left now, you can't you can't win the OVC championship. Uh, you just try to finish the best you can. Uh, I know this team has a lot of pride, and, and that's what you're going to do. Yes, sir. Uh, I, uh, yeah, our team got a, a lot of pride. Uh, you know, uh, just come out, continue to come back tomorrow, uh, start a new week, uh, practice like practice like no no other game. You know, uh, you know, uh, just stuff got to happen. You know, for us to to make things happen, but we're just going to continue to come out and play hard and uh, leave it all on the field. Yeah, well, Coach, that was uh, the the first time I'd really had a chance to uh, visit with Quay very much this season. Of course, he arrived from. University of Kentucky during fall camp. He's really been a great addition to this team and a very nice young man. He, he really is. He's um, out of LaGrange, Georgia, a guy that we recruited a lot at the previous school that I coached at. Um, you know, we didn't know where he was going to fall in the mix, and um, he was very fortunate to um, have gone to University of Kentucky. And things didn't work out real well for him. He wanted to play a little bit more, um, and we were there to 
swoop him up, and we sure are glad we got him. He's a very fine football player, and but he, more important than that, he's a very good person, and he's been a great addition to this team. Quickly becoming uh, one of the leaders uh, on the, the racer team. So Murray State, uh, with the three games left, the next one up is Tennessee Tech. It's a big ball game. Uh, it's been a while since we've beaten Tennessee Tech down at their place, and it'd be great to go down there and get a victory Saturday. It, it really will be. Uh, of course, they, um, every game's a big game, and you know we still got a little bit to play for. You never know what can happen late in the season, but Tennessee Tech's playing extremely well. They just beat Jacksonville State. Um, they're tied for first place, um, and, and but with the head-to-head -head matchup, they're in first place right, right now. They're a top-20 ranked football team. We got to go on the road. We're coming off a tough defeat. Um, so it'll be interesting, but I really believe in our football team. I've said it all season long. We're a lot better team than we were last year. Mm -hmm. Record may not show it, but we're a lot better football team than we were last season, and our program is getting a lot better, and I think our play is very indicative of that. We just have to find a way to get over the hump yeah, and gotta, win those close ones now. That's right, and get those W's. Uh, the Racers uh, going to Tennessee Tech Saturday. We're going to take another break here from the Murray State Locker Room with Head Coach Chris Hatcher. We'll have more, including the OVC standings, next on the Racer Report. Roof Brothers, a Paducah tradition for 100 years. Roof Brothers, locally owned, family run. Roof Brothers, the best selection of beer, wine, and spirits found anywhere. Roof Brothers, service from selecting that special beverage for that special occasion to a keg party at the lake. Roof Brothers, two locations to serve you. Roof Brothers, proud supporters of Murray State Athletics. There's a new, unstoppable force in the universe of internet speed. Introducing Warp Wave, the next generation of high-speed internet, brought to you by the masters of internet service. New wave communications with speeds up to 50 megs. Warp Wave takes you faster than you ever thought possible. Be the most feared online gamer in the galaxy. Stream video with no deep space delay. Download at speeds light years ahead of the competition. Call today and surf at warp speed with the fastest internet, period. Explore a new world. Many experiences you will enjoy. Come and make your own place. Let's go to the world of the Ukusanga. The world of the new experiences. Let's go to the world of the world. 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 The world of the world of the world. The world of the world. Murray State University. Your world to explore. And we're back here in the Murray State locker room with head coach Chris Hatcher on the Racer Report. Uh, coach, let's take a look at the OVC standings. And we mentioned that uh, big upset for Tennessee Tech at Jacksonville State. I'm not sure if you call it an upset. Tech's got a great ball club. Racers are going down there Saturday for a 1.30 kickoff. But look at that log jam now at the top with Tennessee Tech, Eastern Kentucky, and Jacksonville State. Uh, Tech, obviously the hottest team in the league right now. Uh, they're, they're playing some great, great football. That's going to be a tough game for the racers to go down there and, and get a victory. Well, they're all tough, and, mm -hmm. and you know, at, at this point of the season, and they're supposed to be. Um, Tennessee Tech's got a very veteran ball club. Um, they're, uh, Trey Lamb, their quarterback's a fine player. Um, they, they, they're able to run the ball. They throw it well. They mix enough option in there to cause you some fits, and then defensively is really where they're getting it done. You know, they shut down a very powerful Jacksonville State offense this past weekend, so we'll have our hands full. Um, it, it, it's, it's always difficult, as, as you've mentioned to me. I don't think we've played very well um, at their place traditionally, and, you know, again, our, my biggest concern right now with us is with us. And we got to bounce back from this tough defeat and, and realize we have another big opportunity this week um, to get us back on track. You know, we're still in great shape. We finished seven and four. Right. Um, you know, if you, if you finish seven wins, is that magical number to get to the playoffs? Yep. Um, you know, anything can happen. 
Um, so there's some tough games down the stretch for all the teams at the top right. of the conference. Maybe we can work ourselves back in to get – get to the upper part of it as, as the season draws to a close. And that's what the racers are shooting for when they go to Tennessee Tech on Saturday. Our final break here on the Racer Report with Chris Hatcher is right now. We'll come back and wrap it up in just a moment. It's the in-your-face defense. Oh, no, it's a high-powered offense. It's the defense, Dad. It's the offense, Mel. And I thought it was the tailgating. Whatever your reason for coming to Stewart Stadium this fall, the defense... Oh! the offense or the tailgating, be certain to join the racers for their next home game. I'm Chris Hatcher and I want to see you here at Stewart Stadium this Saturday when we host Austin P. New Wave Advantage number 17, the area's fastest internet. This is Nicole. She wants to watch her favorite YouTube video. Not so fast, Nicole. Her slow DSL connection means downloading takes forever. Nicole's tired of waiting, so she's switching to New Wave. New Wave has the area's fastest internet, up to 10 times faster than DSL. Now Nicole can surf, download photos, and stream videos faster than ever before, without the wait. Thanks to New Wave. Blazing fast internet. Another New Wave Advantage. Call today. Like the thoroughbreds we are named for, racers are spirited and proud. We have the heart and will to succeed, to go farther, learn more, and embrace wisdom. We are champions who take our place in the Murray State tradition. It's gone! The racers win! We are racers. Hi, folks. Welcome back here with Chris Hatcher on the Race Report. Time to wrap things up. And, uh, uh, Coach, you talked about uh, the team always practices Sunday evening after, uh, after you play on Saturday. Uh, and a tough defeat like that. How did the team come out? How does, how's it been this week? Uh, it seems like our kids bounce, bounce back pretty quickly. They do, and, and, and that's a good thing. You know, I mean, there's nothing we can do about the Eastern Kentucky game except improve on the mistakes that we made during the course of that ball game. Uh, I thought that Sunday's practice, when they showed up, a lot of long faces. You know, when you watch the film, um, it doesn't lie. You have to point out mistakes. And, you know, there's enough blame to go around all the way around from coaches to I even say the managers and trainers. You know, everybody, when you, when you get beat, nobody feels really good about themselves. Um, but when we went out and practiced, uh, I always tell them, that game's out of the way. It's time to focus on our next opponent. And I think we did a nice job of that Sunday evening. Um, and then as the week progresses, hopefully we'll continue to improve in our skill sets. And, and we, uh, hopefully we'll have a good game plan, which I know we will. Mm -hmm. and, and we're going to go down and compete hard. And I know we're going to play um, as good as we can possibly play. The bottom line is our, our motto this week is more consistent focus throughout the whole 60 minutes of the ball game. And if we're able to do that, I think some good things can happen to us. Well, we hope so, Coach. Don't forget that game Saturday on the Racer Television Network from Tennessee Tech. Coach, thanks for stopping Appreciate by. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. This is Dave Winder. We'll see you next time on the Racer Report. Stab back to Brockman. Rotman looks. Oh, they nearly had him. He's able to scramble to the outside, buy some time, throws into the end zone. It's caught for the score, and the Racers will have a chance to tie Javante Trotter and a great scramble by Brockman that made that possible. First, instead of touchdown, Brockman looks left, throws. He does have Trotter open in the end zone for the score. To this eye set. He'll hand it off. Benjamin's going to be met, and they're going to take him in. Is it a safety? Haven't looked for a signal yet. Yeah, let's see. Well, the other guy says touchdown because the Racers have the ball. It's a touchdown for the Racers. The ball came loose, and the Racers get a score.